Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blabbercast. I'm your host Cameron and with me as always is my co-host and author of The Nicest Parts of Hell, Billy. What's up, Billy? What's going on, Cameron? This is, uh, we are moving on to Event Horizon. So this is the show where we do some work. Anyway, um, <laughs> put in that work, son. So awesome, awesome movie. Release yeah. August 15th, 1997 in the U.S., August 22nd in the U.K., a uh, budget of $60 million, box office of $42 million, which we'll get into. Directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, written by Philip Eisner, and the tagline, Infinite Space, Infinite Ta. Dun, dun, dun. Cast <laughs> is uh, Lawrence Fishburne as Miller. He's known for being known as Larry Fishburne uh, earlier in his career. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam Neill is Dr. Weir for known for being the dinosaur guy. Kathleen Quinnen as Peters, known for uh, uh, <laughs> making me paint the walls because she's fine. Um, <laughs> Jolie Richardson as Stark, uh, known for those wet gray shorts. Uh, Richard T. <laughs> Jones <laughs> as Cooper, and he's known mostly for having giant balls of steel because that guy, that character oh, goes through a lot of this. Um, Jack Noseworthy as Justin. Jason Isaacs as DJ, Sean per- Pertwee as Smith, and Holly Chant as Claire. That's uh, Dr. Weir's suicide wife. Chick with no eyes, but nice tits. There you go. So, they yeah, still look this... marvelous, Dr. Weir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I got so many things to show you. Like, I have to take off your panties. I want to see that. Um, <laughs> yeah, th- I love this movie. This is, uh, this is actually one movie I... I uh, introduced to my dad he he didn't know about this and uh, i mm. played it we watched it together and he's like holy shit this is great and he kind of went on a sam neil tangent after that he you know you'd mentioned the mouth of madness he watched that and the like, mouth of madness is great yeah. yeah that's a good another good one my dad just watched the shit out of that yeah so uh yeah this is a this was um perfect blend in my opinion of sci-fi and horror so i just i love i love this movie it's great but after not watching it for a while and what you know taking notes for the show there's some things that i noticed that we'll get into later so oh we'll definitely get into it yeah the first thing i noticed the intro theme i know like, right it's, it's like what the, it's like it's like i, I didn't even know what to liken it to best i could do you pop in this is 97 telling if the audio was that good yet Let's just go with like maybe I got to PS2 days, Xbox OG, you know, the intro, you know, the music and the menu slowed in screen. Like, yeah, it's like, uh, so that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they'd changed that. But yeah, intro theme wasn't bueno for me, but you know, it's fine. You forget about it pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I noticed that too, watching it. I was just like, what? That doesn't really fit. I mean, sometimes I was like, "Wow, this is a this is a horror movie." I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> horror movies, the, the soundtrack. No, it wasn't that bad. It just didn't fit to me. That's all. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, it just didn't fit. No. Um, another part of the opening is uh, seeing all the uh, detritus floating around in the event horizon. Um, the CGI that they used to to do that. It looked pretty good for the time uh but yeah. like now it's just like oh 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 okay yeah this is a 90s movie got it so all right yeah it, i did like that i mean i still liked it though but yeah it was definitely yeah i can see that absolutely so the main thing with this too we got we have it so you have a ship that's been outside the known universe the outside of wherever the whole known universe i find that pretty fascinating you find out later that you know it's alive it's a, a living ship which is Awesome, because you can't see the monster. Kind of like they did with aliens, and to a respect, you don't really see the monster much. This one, you really can't see the monster, and I think that's awesome. And it's just that opens your mind's expansion to like, fuck, what did it see? I don't want to know. I don't want it explained. You get little glimpses of it, but I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, um, it it kind of amplifies the whole haunted house thing because a house is kind of like mm-hmm. your safe haven. Your your a coven of normalcy, but in space, a spaceship is literally keeping you alive and that's your lifeboat. And when that's yeah. trying to kill you, you're like, well, what the fuck do I do now? You know? <laughs> yeah. You're kind of fucked everywhere there. Yeah. yeah so, Absolutely. Um, 
the visuals. Uh, what do you think? I thought they were great. Uh, Dr. Weir. I always say his name like that. Ever since, ever since I see Sam Neill, Dr. Weir. Dr. Weir. I think he's in, I'm 99% sure I didn't put in all the work, but he was in a Peaky <laughs> Blinders. He I is. think he's in that. He's still, uh, yeah, and he's great in that too. I mean, he's he just an amazing actor. So is the plan that you'll stay together forever? Or perhaps she'll whore for you, take her husband's money. Is that the plan? Um, that is like he's done as a ship. It looks like scaffolding almost. And they have that cut where he's drinking coffee and it cuts all the way out to space. So there's oh, that yeah. really good expanse. Then you get another cut soon after that where it zooms into somebody through a window. Well done. And there's just so many awesome, just a great job of the production crew to get all these sets together. And whoever Anderson knows, even with AVP, he does have guys that know how to build sets. 100%. Yep. He's good. They're good at that. Yeah, it's uh, definitely have has that gritty used look to it, uh, sort of akin to Alien. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, although maybe not as over uh, worked, um, right? As a you know, as a mining ship, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> it there are a lot of things in this that uh, harken back or give me vibes rather to Alien and Hellraiser and probably a couple other. Uh, things like uh like hey, frank oh frank <laughs> they need a frank's dick that's what the ship needed frank <laughs> six is sick in the ship <laughs> sorry ironically that that's where the ship went because it went to frank's dick because uh you know when they get that video of the of the crew the unaltered video of the crew it's just one big orgy so you know that's, that's it was fucked yeah like tearing each other apart <laughs> amazing yeah uh <laughs> But well, we said this mixes that horror and sci-fi. It does yep. go together like peanut butter and jelly. I mean, Alien has that. This one, I say, is actually gives me more of a uneasy feeling. Just, just because I'm like, what the fuck could happen? And I hadn't seen this in quite a while. Very, what's around the corner? And uh, Madacha Wee is in that cor- little corridor. It looks like the Matrix, all green and shit. And the lights go out. That was just horrifying. You just see the wife eventually. Yep. Oh, well, she's attractive, though, so that's not too scary. Yeah. You know, but I mean, like, in fairness. But, yeah, that was cool. I mean, the lights going out, awesome shit. Um, I said, definitely was mentioned. It does have that alien feel mixed with Hellraiser, and yep. kind of they had a baby, and boom, that's what you have here. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely uh, definitely dig that. Uh, that that one scene where Dr. Dr. Weir. Dr. Weir. In, <laughs> in the, that little hallway. Oh. Uh. Uh, that's one of the scenes that reminded me of Alien, where in Dallas is, you know, hunting the alien, and they, right. That's what I felt like too. Mm. He realizes I'm getting hunted. Oh shit! So hey, yeah, that shit. Paul W. S. Anderson gets. I mean, I know he's got a lot of shit. I mean, like people should throw him a few bones. I mean, I think he has done good shit. I think he'd be very disingenuous to say, "Oh, he's total garbage." He's. I mean, this movie alone, it's a called classic. Pretty much everyone seems to like it. Although it's Metacritic yeah. score is a bit low, but um, yeah, we'll talk about you know why this maybe flopped in the theater. It didn't flop overall. Some interesting, uh, possibly factoids about that. Depends on yeah. the work we put in. Um, I really hope that person watches. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your comment go? Anyway, um, oh, oh, oops. Ouch. anyway, but yeah, you say it looks like the same room they killed Ash in. Yeah, there's uh, another room where uh, the first off, Sam Neil. Sam Neill giving that explanation uh, to the crew, uh, the introduction and the explanation to the crew of the event horizon and how it travels uh, vast distances. I always found really fascinating that kind of uh, stirred my my imagination with like wormholes and stuff like that, because this is basically what you're doing is you're creating a wormhole. Um, bending. Yeah, Ben, and usually it's a piece of paper. And I like the one guy say, hey, and it's like a cute chick. He's like. A very attractive piece of paper. That was a good <laughs> line. <laughs> so that was funny. Excuse but yeah, we just shows two hole, two holes, and bend them together. And that's how, yeah. again, it goes back to normal after that. Because I mean, there's such immense holes. distances in space. That's two holes, yeah. <laughs> with such immense distances. I that was good. Layman's terms. They had asked him twice for layman's terms, and he did get that. So they did have good science. Whoever wrote this, um, good sciencey. We have the writer up here. Just give him credit. Um, I think I did. Maybe I didn't. Philip um, Eisner. 
Philip Eisner. And again, I don't know who he knew or just knows this himself, but good scientific explanations. Well, it's obvious. It's fascinating. That, it's obvious that he did the work. He put it <laughs> put in the work. <laughs> but that room where uh, Sam Neill is uh, giving that explanation, that kind of reminds me of the room that uh, Sigourney and the other people uh, killed Ash in and aliens. Yeah, uh, I, I bet I bet he used that. Yeah, as like inspiration. Yeah, not. Yeah. So. And, and I, I don't mind that kind of stuff uh, too much. Um, I don't at, at no point did like any of this stuff like take me out of the movie. There's some things that kind of took me out of the movie, but um, that definitely wasn't one of them. So um, mm. and then you had mentioned how the cast wasn't like a really big ensemble. Yeah, it's not a hu- huge cast that you get now. They have, I think, a little bit too many characters. This was stretching on maybe having too many, but they did give everyone time to breathe. A little bit of a backstory good lines they were it was earnest it was done well you know you know cooper is you no know, stark is you know, as you go down the list um the one guy's like you know you know fuck this ship you know the accent i can't remember his name for some reason but he was <laughs> he was done it was done well and the um it was a justin and the thing that was you know you got backstory they did a good job filling out and making the most of a very it's not long it's only an hour and a half yeah yeah I they, they got to it quick mm. um Interesting I, thing I noticed is that, I, you know, the, the ship, you know, is kind of reacting to the presence of uh, the crew, the Lewis and Clark being on it. And it's like waking up, so to speak. And um, it's giving everybody it's playing on everybody's fears and whatnot. And they're, right. you know, susceptible to like visions or whatever of their greatest fears or uh, mornings or guilt. And interesting, I noticed not everyone actually gets affected by the ship. DJ didn't have any visions. Stark didn't. Smith didn't. And mm-hmm. Cooper didn't. And poor Justin went through the the gateway and landed on Frank's dick. That's why he couldn't talk anymore. So. Yeah, I've seen things. Uh, things, things. <laughs> that pleasures. <laughs> the pleasures. <laughs> right. Hell is only oh my God. Blood. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I thought that was interesting. It was like uh, Dr. Weir, uh, Larry Fishburne's character, uh, uh, Kathleen Quinlan, Quinlan um, which was very creepy, very, very creepy. But right, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, inter- I, I, it, not a lot of people were affected by it. Um, so that was just interesting. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it's just some of them, yeah, which is, yeah, you wonder why, but that's ambiguous. So. Didn't, didn't um, help the story or the flow of it, so. Yeah, exactly, didn't. Obviously, you got Fishburne and Neil, though, that lead this. Both of them are fucking stellar, perfect yeah. acting. There's nothing I would even pick apart trying to. They are so good. And all the other actors are great in this, as I said, but, man, Lawrence Fishburne is just fucking great, and Sam Neill just delivers no matter what he does. Yep. Yeah, everything is just perfect. I mean, it's, it's God knows. I mean, you know, he just he puts in the uh, puts in the work. Puts in the work. Sorry, I'm, stop saying the work. That <laughs> I'm going to mention that really quick. It's on a quick aside note. This is Blabbercast. So we keep getting comments on the thing. I'm like, why are you guys so many fucking comments? I mean, that's fine. I mean, whatever. I mean, we have a lot of <laughs> archives, but I'm like, that, that's I'm, a whole classic. A whole classic. I see people like contradict themselves two or three times down in the comments. And then it's like, no, John Carper didn't tweet it. He tweeted this. Shit, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God. This dude is. I mean, again, maybe they're not agitated, but I'm like, just, just chill out, bro. There, there you was, know, like I say, if you're coming here for a 100% like cross reference shit, you ain't going to get it. I promise you that. I got, I don't have enough hours in the day to go through this shit. So I tried yeah. my best. I'll say it's mostly from IMDb, but it's at the. Yeah, but we're we're by no like we've always said by no means are we experts on these things, and we do put in you know, apparently only some of the work. Uh, some of but, the work. But uh, there's a like I probably cross reference uh, a lot of the stuff that we pick out. I by, try like, to, yeah. Five I mean, to ten different websites, and yeah. uh, a lot of everybody has kind of the same stuff. It's really hard to find some things that are like really juicy, unique. Factual. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oliver, so. Oliver Harper is really good at finding shit that I've never heard of, though. He's really good at it. He yeah, shout out to Oliver. Yeah, he's great. I think he's a king of retrospectives. Yeah, buddy. But she so said this reminds you of Black Friday. 
<laughs> oh yeah, where's that 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 video um, of the crew uh, tearing each other apart? The original crew of the Event Horizon tearing each other apart. Uh, just reminds me of Black Friday in the early uh, early two thousands, late nineties, or uh, you know whenever the yeah. new iPhone comes out. So there you go. Or the Samsung, those are popular too. I'll throw them both yeah. out there. Uh, <laughs> and as I said people must have had a lot of shit to do in August of ninety seven to miss this, in my opinion. But um, there were some heavy movie releases at the time. Uh, that was a heavy year it, for movies. Heavy and Titanic was eating up a lot of box office. Still, I don't oh, think yeah. around J- July. I'd be wrong. Maybe it, was, maybe it was after this, but either way, it was eating up a lot of box office. So, and there was other, you know, nothing like huge around this time to me, but there was a lot of releases. So, well, I don't know if there was element. any fatigue. Fifth Element had come out. Yeah. So, Contact. I'm surprised it did that poorly. Contact. Devil's Advocate, mm-hmm. Face Off, Starship Troopers, uh, mm-hmm. Batman and Robin, Con Air. Well, Batman that and really, Robin. <laughs> I mean, that did, that wasn't that great, but that was like a big draw. It was a draw, yeah. Including Goodwill like Hunting, dude. Men in Black, uh, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. That didn't do that. Yeah, again, a big draw. So, I mean, there was a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition. That's why I would heard it, I think, a little bit. But again, it depends its following. So Yeah, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I have I have this on two different formats. So it's uh, it's, mm-hmm. this is going to be, you know, the Library of Congress has their, their vaulted movies, you know, in case they... Uh, you know, go off into space or whatever. They bring yeah. on their movies. Event Horizon is in my vault. Oh, exactly. It has to be. It's definitely, if I had 100 movies, it has to be in there. Oh, yeah. I praise too. Uh, and there's also, this appears, uh, the Event Horizon reappears around Neptune. I remember I mentioned that. I think it was on 2010, the year we made contacts. Mm-hmm. I think it was that one. I said, that'd be cool to have a movie setting there. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, this one is, I forgot about that. Oh, Pretty cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shot you know, Neptune, and they're you know, kind of around that area. Thought that's a neat, you know, especially edges of the solar system and all that. So that was pretty neat. Uh, again, shout out to the Cooper for just being awesome. Yeah, some favorite yeah. Cooper moment. <laughs> what about you, Stark? Would you like something hot and black inside you? Oh, is that an offer? Uh, like mm-hmm. when he's asking Stark if she wants something hot and black in her. <laughs> <laughs> and he's holding a cup of coffee and a, and a, and a, uh, a carafe and stuff and she's just like yeah fuck you i think there's something going on between like i think if there was like like a three-hour movie you'd see them fucking but um my favorite cooper moment is when uh miller and stark are on the bridge with the fully fucked up uh dr dr we um yeah so he like the same way. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he he's gouged his eyes out. He's fucked up his face, and he's got that like space nail gun or harpoon gun or whatever. And yeah. uh, Cooper was on the Lewis and Clark when it exploded, and he's like hurling out to space. He's like, "What the fuck?" And he manages by expelling his air tanks to get back to the event horizon, which right. is a very, very, very hard thing to do because it's like you know uh, getting aiming for a pinpoint in space and hitting a dead on bullseye. That's yeah, very hard. You miss. To do. You're just going to be. Yeah. You're fucked. Taking off to nowhere. <laughs> so. so. Cooper lands on the, the window of the deck, the window of the bridge on the event horizon, thus taking the attention away from Dr. Weir and Miller and Dr. Weir's like, Oh, there's somebody else I can kill. And he shoots the harpoon at the window. It goes through, depressurizes, you know, Dr. Weir gets sucked out. Uh, Stark and uh, Miller get out and then uh, they close the door. And then they hear that the, uh, the airlock, the, the front airlock is being opened manually. And they're like, it's gotta be Dr. Weir. How could it be? I don't know. It's a horror movie. And they run to the door <laughs> of the airlock and they're like, we're going to beat the shit out of this guy. I'm paraphrasing. (laughs) Oh, I got to go take a piss. And then they get like space (laughs) hammers and shit. And they're like, we're going to knock the fuck out of this guy. And the airlock doors open. And there's like a shit ton of smoke that, you know, blocks their vision of who it is. And (laughs) Cooper in his space suit, you know, jumps through the smoke and he's like, don't hit me. (laughs) 
and he falls down. And then the way he just says, don't hit me. It was just so funny. It was just like, that was good. Yeah. it was just such a perfect delivery. It was just, uh, I laugh every time I see it. I laughed yeah. my ass off when I saw it this time. So that's my favorite Cooper moment. That was a good one, yeah. Fucking, it's it's such a good movie, man. Then you get yeah. to see the gravity drive. That looks awesome. And again, this isn't that's not CGI. Somebody's taking the time to make that. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's I don't think anyone sees CGI anyway. But I mean, that that was amazing just to see that. That was just cool. And so many designs just in that long corridor. They when they first entered the event horizon. Yeah, looks it's like geez, like, I don't know, like this whole football field, maybe longer. It's huge. It's like a grief. <laughs> um so much i mean it's just one after another you just have to name all the cool looking set designs it'd take a, it'd be a long list i'd have to put in here yeah yeah i i agree the 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 gateway um uh, definitely looked the gravity drive definitely looked really really cool uh mm. a lot of thought put into it very aesthetically pleasing um and then you had mentioned Dr. Weir in the tunnel areas and the lights going out is a uh, pretty, pretty damn intense. Uh, that was the matrix area you were talking about, right? Yeah. It's all green. And I just thought matrix. Well, yeah. I mean, Lawrence Fishburne's in this so, or Larry Fishburne. So I mean, it's, uh, so. a couple of years yeah. later, I think he does the matrix. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, He's like, Hey, I got an idea. Um, yeah, this kind of looked like Disney tried to do a hall of presidents ride of the matrix and then you know instead of doing like graphics it's just like let's put up green wallpaper and then we'll just have a wish version of agent smith hey sam and then uh <laughs> a little bit yeah yeah and i was i was marvel like i think you would have to be this way but it seems like in every sci-fi movie there's always like every astronaut seems to know exactly what to do and how to do it on every spaceship now I I know for for a fact that like you know real astronauts are actually kind of like that they got to know the spaceship in and out and that you know when they get into a situation up in space they know how to fix it so I'm sure I mean, it lends to reason that that would be the normal like it, that would be the way it is in the future but I just think it's funny that like something goes down they know exactly where to go how to do it and meanwhile I'm like um you know trying to take my car to the mechanic to fix uh, the AC. And uh, I'm just like, I don't know how to do it. Fix it. Eh. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's actually true. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I was like, well, they always, yeah, they always just know they almost have more attention. If like, dude, I don't know. I'm the fucking engineers I hear. Yeah. It's you know, like, so I don't know. We have to just figure it out, you know, try to figure something else out. Yeah. Like that's one thing about being an astronaut. I really admire about, real astronauts is those fuckers are so smart they're just like oh yeah you know the complex matrix uh geometrator is yeah yeah i know that yeah i put the, that together with toothpaste you know so, yeah, like the and stuff, yeah yeah so um and then let's see what there else was, uh, stark stark says the ship's reactions and then being aboard it's like an immune response yeah, that's yeah. Good. another good line there's a lot of good yeah. lines in this ship very smart uh very very uh, intriguing draws you in quite a bit so and uh yeah the ending is really really cool too um it Sam ends Neal. good yeah i was worried about that because i hadn't seen this such a long time i'm like fuck i can't remember how this ends <laughs> you know, i wasn't yeah. upset i was like that's pretty good yeah sam neal is just a beast uh and he's all bald and shit and every plate every inch of him is all fucked up he's got his eyes back um that's weird. Yeah, they came back. Yeah. Uh, there is one part that uh, kind of like uh, the the last line that uh, Larry Lar- Lawrence Fishburne says. Uh, Doctor Weir's like, "Can you see?" And Miller's just like, "Yes, I can see." And then he hits like the bombs, and that goes off. That's just kind of a lame line. I you know, after all the good writing, I think they were just. Maybe tell I didn't notice that. Yeah, that one was a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I mean, again, we're really nitpicky, but yeah, that wasn't that could have been covered probably a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch some more yeah, 80s movies and you get your one liners and <laughs> yeah, or oh, that's a bane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that just kind of reminded me of the, the, the shitty comeback that Batman had in uh, Dark Knight Returns. Um, uh, 
Rises. Dark Knight Rises. I, I always get those fucking stories mixed up. Um, when Batman comes back to, you know, uh, defeat Bane, and Bane's like, did you come back to die with your city? That's a horrible Bane impression. And <laughs> Batman's like, no, I came back to stop you. I mean, it's like, God dang. Come on, dude. Billions of dollars on your cosplay, and you can buy a book on witty comebacks? Come on, bitch. Come yeah, on. that was a little bit off. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> And then the sets, like like we we're talking about, is that so many really cool visuals on the on the ship. You got that long corridor, uh, the the gravity drive, and then the hallway just before the gravity drive looks like you're in a fun house, fun house uh, at a carnival or something. It's just very well done. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a couple of points on this movie as well. The hour, 19 minutes and 15 seconds, Cameron. <laughs> go ahead and say, because you told me about this. Yesterday. I'm like, really? I was watching this and like I happened to turn my attention to my phone uh, to respond to a text. And I heard the sound and I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, I thought like maybe the channel had changed and I started listening to Looney Tunes com- cartoons. Mm. But it's in that same scene where Miller and Weir are fighting on the deck on the deck on the bridge of the event horizon. And he shoots that bolt through the window. Everything, everything starts to get depressurized and stuff is starting to come apart. And there's like this one box or something that's like attached to a wall and it gets ripped apart, uh, ripped off the wall because of the right. vacuum of space and when it does it has this <laughs> we'll cut it we'll cut it in here uh, it has this very cartoonish sounding like uh, sound effect and it, it was just it so didn't fit in there and i just started laughing as it was it was it's just one of those uh weird weird things that i <laughs> i found i thought it was kind of kind of neat so yeah, I didn't hear it though. I, I didn't wasn't I don't know why I missed that, but I got looking forward. I'm still to this recording right now, have not heard it, so I'm looking forward to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> so the Foley artists fucked up there. They were rushing us in fairness, stuff like that might happen. Like just, I can't find a better sound, just fuck it, move on. Yeah. Probably yeah. happens a lot. Yeah. And uh one of my favorite lines that Sam Neil uh delivers is when they're in the corridor in between the two main parts of the ship. Him and Miller are fighting, and then the power starts to go out, and suddenly it's really, really dark in the corridor. There's sparse amounts of light, and Miller's like, we're leaving. We're going home. And then Sam Neill says, I am home, and then he backs out, backs into the shadows and disappears. I thought that was such a cool line, such a cool shot. Very, very creepy, very cool. That is awesome, man, for sure. That was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one of those iconic things. There's just so much. There's a lot of good shit in this movie. It's, the whole thing has got constant stuff. I was like, wow, that felt short. It feels like 45 minutes instead of, it feels like half the time. Yeah. And also, too, it's kind of fascinating about sci-fi movies. They have that hypersleep chambers and stuff where people sleep until they get to the destination, which could take a long time. And people have like a long sense in comas as their body is aged, so... Science so had to find a way to stop the uh, aging process too. I would, you know, either in sleep limbo, depending on how long they're asleep. For sure, I guess freezing them, but I mean, they're just usually in water or some shit. Like in the beginning, I don't know how that would work. I would never be able to do that. I uh, was going. <laughs> you better load me up with a lot of fucking Valium or something, but like a lot. Like fuck it, I'm dying on Earth. It's all good. How much CBD do you want? Like ten thousand milligrams. So, oh shit, I'm getting in there, bro. I'm cool, you know. But we have something like that. <laughs> All right, now we put our factoids at the end of this one, so to change it up a little bit. It's proof of our work. Off IMDb. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so at least for me. So we, uh, this is what was rushed through editing and post. And it had to be finished and uh, finished the edit in six weeks and also to work around the release of Titanic. So, oh, yeah. And uh, Paul W.S. Anderson's initial cut is hundred ran 130 minutes, so that's quite a bit longer than 90. Um, it was so violent that test audiences and the studio balked at the finished product. So Paramount ordered him to cut the film by 30 minutes and tone down some of the violence. So Anderson said he didn't have enough time to, for a proper re-edit and believes he cut out 10 minutes too much. 
Although it was announced in 2012 that producer Lloyd Levin had found a VHS tape that might contain a full version of the film, nice. Anderson revealed in 2017 that neither he nor Levin had seen it yet, as they had both been too busy in the same uh, country with a VHS player. <laughs> so also he <laughs> believes that the condition of the copy uh, would be too poor to use, and Anderson stated that yeah, he's still excited to see what's on it. So I guess as a director, you don't, you know, you see the dailies, we don't see the whole thing. So it's kind of yeah. funny. There's a lot of stuff that no one's ever seen. And he, in, in this day and age, you got to have a VHS player. Good luck finding one of those. No, no. I mean, I guess you could find it, but yeah. I got two. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> Saving them. Uh, the script originally described the gateway machine as smooth and featureless black orb, uh, 10 meters, uh, nearly 33 feet in diameter suspended in midair between large rotating mechanical arms. Uh, it was also said to contain a stable black hole within it at all times, which the ship used as a power source, as opposed to briefly creating a temporary one. Paul Anderson decided to redesign it to involve interlocking circular circles as an homage to the puzzle box in Hellraiser. So there you go. You get the Hellraiser. Oh, oh, that's where it comes. Mm-hmm. At about five minutes in, there's a rotational shot of the space station over Earth that it took nearly a third of the film's visual effects budget. So, good Lord. Good, gracious, I know. That was a nice shot, but I don't know if that was worth it. I'm like, fuck a whole bunch of that, bro. Save me some money. <laughs> They were, they were into the they were off the coca at that point. I, yeah, they were they were running running fast on that coca. Um, although the film met with mostly negative reviews and a disappointing box office office result at the time of its release, it amassed a considerable cult following over the years. Director Paul Anderson said that the movie's cult status was predicted to him years before by Kurt Russell, Snake hmm. Bliskin himself. Uh, Anderson screened Event Horizon. Uh, before they had started to work on Soldier in 1998. And Russell said, forget about what this movie's doing now. 15 years time, this is going to be a movie that you're glad that you're glad you have made. So, Interesting. Good, Russell knew. Kudos, yeah. Kurt. I uh, had around uh, one hour and 25 minutes. The filming of the Gravity Drive uh, caught on fire, uh, caused a real fire that partially destroyed the set. Different set had to be rebuilt quickly. While the old one was being repaired, in the end, the repairs repaired set was only used for an additional day of filming. So pretty cool. That's pretty fucking interesting. Also, someone was hurt. So. Yeah. yeah. That's where they got the Bernie Man idea. You never know. Probably actually. <laughs> well, I <you> always wonder. <laughs> so there you go, folks. Uh, there's our retrospective on Event Horizon. Uh, make sure to leave a comment. Let us know. What you liked about the movie. Have you seen the movie? Did we spoil it? Too bad. It's been out since 1997. You should have watched it by now. Uh, Hit the subscribe (laughs) button. Share it with everybody. And on your other socials, check out the description, the link in the description. That'll lead you to a uh, a place, a magical place, where you can buy my co-host's book, The Nicest Parts of Hell, in three different formats, uh, audio, paperback, and Kindle. Uh, Check it out now. And, uh, yeah, anything else, Billy, what do you got to say? Last words, Ben Horizon. Last words, we have definitely circle jerked the F out of this movie. So <laughs> there's not much to, to critique on it. So I don't have much negative on this. I'd be curious if anybody's negative on this. I don't think so from our viewers. I don't, I would doubt it, but, um, be curious to see if somebody is negative. I'd be surprising, but awesome movie. If you haven't seen it, just let you know. Just tap in watch for free. There's a website. You know, just watch around for a website for no cost. <laughs> it's like get Hulu and Showtime. Like, oh, the streaming services then streaming services. Hey, I'll just watch it for free. So, <laughs> I'm surprised but, people fall for that. It's like, ooh, I gotta pay this one I, site so I can pay to watch this other site. It's like, yeah, it's like the fuck. Anyway, whatever. So. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Uh thanks for hanging out with us. If you're a new subscriber, uh welcome and if you're a vet thank you for watching with us hanging out with us every week uh hitting up those comments we love to read what you guys have to say and with that we are out have a good week ladies and gentlemen peace out see you